Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 8.2.2.7 configuring OSPF v2 in a single area. So we'll start by opening up our Packet Tracer activity. I like to go ahead and give mine a reset just to make sure everything's cleared out for my videos. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the scenario for this is that the IP addressing has already been configured and we just need to configure the three routers with basic single area OSPF v2 and then verify connectivity between all of our devices. I'm going to go ahead and hit fast forward time a little bit here, get all our devices up and running and boot it up and then we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and start with router 1 and use, using the requirements listed in the instructions we are going to use process ID 10 um, a router ID for each router. R1 is going to be 1.1.1.1, R2 is going to be 2.2.2.2, and R3 is going to be 3.3.3.3. Um, we will need to include the network address for each attached interface on each router. So routers 1, router 1 will have 3, router 2 will have 3, and router 3 will have 3. So we'll take a look at those when we get there and we need to set the LAN interface on each router to passive so it does not broadcast out the um, neighbor routes. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started in R1, jump into the command line interface. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. And we'll go ahead and get started. Get up to the global configuration mode. We want to go ahead and create the OS OSPF 10 process ID 10 give the router ID 1111 and then we wanted to start setting these network addresses in here and so on router 1 the first one I'm going to configure is going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and start with the LAN interface or the LAN network here 172.16.1 and then we want to use the wildcard mask rather than the subnet mask for that network so it's a slash 24 our wildcard is going to be 000255 and assign it into area 0 then we have another network the 172.16.30 slash 30 this portion from router to router so we're going to do that network next. Like so. Wildcard mask of 0003. <coughs> and then our third network is going to be our other router, router 1 to router 3. So our 192 network here. with wildcard mask 0003 again and put it into area 0 and then the last step is to put this LAN interface as our passive interface and that is gigabit 00 so we go to the interface sorry we don't need to go to that interface to do that we need to come back over here from our OSPF configuration we give it the passive interface G00 command. So my mistake on that, we still do that from within the OSPF configuration. And then we are done with router 1, so we'll hop over to router 2. We're going to be doing the same thing, the only thing that's going to change is our network slightly. Global configuration mode, router OSPF 10, router ID 2222 and then our three networks in area 0 and our last network here And that one got kind of broken up. You can see the first portion of it here. 
I finished it there, so the wild card mask is 0, 0, 0, 3, and then just putting it into area 0. And then we also want to give it a passive interface for the LAN, which is on G00 again. Alright, so router 2 is all set up. The next thing we want to do is set up router 3. Um, I didn't really show on router 2. Let me come back into this for a second. So our three networks, the 172.16.2 is our LAN network here. Our second network was the 172.16.3, which is our router to router here. And our third network was the 192.168.10.8, which is our router to router here. So all three interface networks got set in there. Router 3 now. It's going to be pretty similar. An ID of 3. And then our networks. So I'm going to show those first, and then we'll come and type them in. So our first, I'm probably going to go ahead and do our LAN first. And then we're going to do um, router to router here, and router to router here. Not necessarily in that order. I think I'm going to do LAN, this router, then that router, so it's a little bit organized. So we have the 192.168.10 with a mask 000255, area 0. Network 192.168.10.4.0003, area 0, and our last network here. Let me get that passed through. 10.8. Alright, so there's our three networks. The first two are here. The last one is there. And then the last step for this is to give a passive interface for G0, 0. All right, go ahead and give it at the end of command so we're done configuring. <coughs> and then we're going to hop back into each router and just double check our routes. So we'll go end show IP route and we should see the ones that we've manually entered as well as the remote networks I have a great way of showing this here kinda running out of room that should work so we have our 172.16.1.0 so our LAN network directly connected and then we had our 172.16.3 directly connected, which is our router to router. And then our 192.168.10.4 directly connected, which is this router to router. And so it looks like I picked some of these others up. Let's take a look. 172.16.2.0. So this is the R2 LAN. So it knows from serial zero it can connect to this network. And that was a, sh a neighbored share from R2. Uh, 172.16.3, we already looked at that. That's directly connected. And... 192.168.10, which is the R3 LAN here, has been picked up via serial 001 out here to R3. So we can see how it's picking all of these networks up and determining the best routes for them. And bring this back over. We could go ahead and go into routers 2 and 3 and just verify the same thing. Show IP route. And we can see all the routes that it knows whether it's learned it from OSPF, uh, neighbor share, basically. 
So those are the ones it's been learning from its neighbors. And the directly connected or the ones that we've told it about. So you can go into R3 and double check that too. Um, the last step for this is that all of our PCs should be able to ping. I'm going to run a simple PDU for this and get all of my ARP tables and everything built, clear everything out, and try again. So we have success from 1 to 2, success from 1 to 3, and success from 3 to 2. So everything has connectivity, and that covers everything for this activity. We can verify 100% completion, and double check that all of our configuration is set up correctly. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you all in my next video.